Hi, I'm Charlotte Russell of Charlotte Russell Contemporary. I'm here today talking with featured artist Alexandra Chu. She is currently in an exhibition on view at CRC Gallery in Raleigh, North Carolina, and in a show called On the Horizon. The show will be on view until March 26, 2021. I'm so excited to talk with you, Alexandra. Oh, thanks for having me today, Charlotte. I really appreciate your time and I'm excited to share more about my work. Yes. So tell me a little bit about you. How did you become an artist? Um, so when I was younger, I always loved to create and draw. And it's something that I've just carried with me throughout college and, and even, um, you know, to this day. And for me, uh, my work is very much about, it started with this interest in nature. So not just the beauty of nature or the complexity of nature, but the sense of uh, exploration when you find a new place and really exploring, uh, you know, feeling immersed in a new environment and that sense of awe that you feel. But nature is also a place of reflection and a true sanctuary. So all of those ideas have always really inspired me and intrigued me and, and really driven me to create work that celebrates a lot of those themes. Interesting. And can you talk a little bit about your process? Oh, yes, of course. So in terms of my materials and process, um, I work with paper and I actually started as an oil painter, um, but I moved over to paper for some practical reasons early on, uh, mainly uh, at the time I moved to a small apartment. And so I had a very small space, very limited storage. And so I found myself kind of moving away from canvas to paper. And I'm really glad that I made that leap, though, because I love how paper is a material that, you know, it can be very delicate, but it can also be very strong and sturdy. And, and when people think, and when you, when we talk about my work, and you'll see some of the sculptural and dimensional elements that are in it, um, you know, a lot of people think of, like when they hear the word sculptural, they'll think of ceramics or some kind of metal and they don't think of paper. So in that respect, I appreciate how kind of under the radar it is. It kind of beats expectations in a way. Um, and it's, it's just very flexible. Um, it's something that, you know, it can be so many things and I really love experimenting with it. And in terms of my actual process, so what I do is I start by painting out the various colors on different sheets of paper. And then I cut out those shapes. So I hand cut everything and um, I piece them together like a puzzle. And I like to describe my process as putting together a puzzle without knowing what the end image will be beforehand. So it's, it's kind of hitting a moving target. You know, it's slowly evolving over time. Um, but I think my process is very much about not just that end image, that I land on, but kind of that, that journey of finding that and thinking about all my experiences in nature and memory and bits and pieces of family history that all find their way into my work. What I love about your work is that it's so sculptural. I think that when you view the work in person, you can really get a sense of the three-dimensionality of the pieces coming off of the page. Typically, when people think of a work on paper or even a collage work, they don't really think about the dimension that can happen. And it's interesting in your work, the way that these different forms emerge jumping off the page. One of the focal points of the exhibition is your work, Whisper. Could you talk a little bit about um, the title and, and the, your process behind this work? Oh, sure. So Whisper is uh, a truly special piece to me. Uh, to give you a bit of a backstory, many of the pieces in this exhibition uh, were inspired uh, by my trip to Joshua Tree National Park, which is in Southern California. And hopefully, um, you know, whoever is seeing this has had a chance to visit, but it, for those that haven't, it's a place that's really magical. And it's, I remember when I first visited, um, I felt like I was on a completely different planet. I had never experienced anything like it. And it was, it was like a, there were these alien like vegetation and flowers and, 
and really interesting contours and the rock formations were just really fascinating to me. And so, um, you know, I was thinking a lot about those ideas when I made these pieces and also the quiet beauty of the desert. So the desert is a place that's uh, even before I visited, I thought, oh, it's kind of barren. It looks kind of dry, you know, <laughs> like I, I can see everything from far away. But when I got there, I really came to appreciate just all that quiet beauty, all those subtleties and nuances, and it's really full of life. And so a lot of these pieces in the exhibition are very much about that, those ideas of, of that kind of quiet power and that resilience and these nuances. And so Whisper in particular um, is very much about, it's not just about the, the landscape and the desert. So um, you'll see in the piece that there are a lot of references to different rock formations. Uh, so I was very much inspired by that in the mountains. Um, there are some uh, specks of gold and yellow that you'll see in the piece as well. And those are very much, um, they were taken from and inspired by a lot of the flowers that I saw during the spring bloom. And there are a lot of pinks and purples as well, which were, I was really intrigued by dusk and golden hour in the desert. Mm -hmm. It's when it starts to transform and it's completely different at night. So I really was trying to capture that in my work as well. Um, but also in this piece, uh, I was thinking a lot about the silence of the desert. So it's not a, a lonely silence, but it's very comforting and it's very powerful. And it's this idea of being able to go somewhere and to find a true sanctuary, a place of reflection, to be in a place where you're at peace, but also uplifted and empowered in a way. And so this piece, Whisper, is very much about that. And the title Whisper is really a reference to that silence, that really powerful silence that I felt immersed in when I visited the park. That's so interesting. Alexandra's work is featured alongside a photographer, Grace Clark, and on view are her works called Terraform. And Terraform are photographs that she took at Joshua Tree and in the Mojave Desert where she incorporated her own body. She photographed her own body mimicking the forms found in nature. So it's a really interesting parallel to see two female artists talking about the way that the desert has inspired them. One in photography, um, potentially a more obvious route for exploring the desert, but then paired with your works on paper, sculptural works on paper. It's a really interesting balance of talking a lot about the same conceptual themes. Yeah, I, lo I always love seeing that, just how we can be inspired by the same thing, but in so in, it's expressed in such a different way. Yes, in such a different way. Um, and I really see in the piece Whisper, uh, the purple, I've been really drawn to the color purple and pinks recently and since the pandemic, probably because of seeing the, the different hues in nature, spending more, out time, more time outside. So it's really, really interesting. Another work in the show is called Infinite Tapestry. Um, I love this work because it looks a little bit different than some of the other works and it's a, it has a little bit more of an intricate uh, cut design. Can you talk about Infinite Tapestry? Sure. So as I mentioned earlier, a lot of the pieces are very much in that idea of exploring nature and being inspired by the desert in particular. And so in this piece, uh, I made this in the same series. And so it's very much a lot of the imagery is taken from the desert. So if you look closely at it, there are rock formations and um, different patterns that I saw in the park. And those really found their way into my work. Um, there's also some really interesting um, interesting vegetation that I saw in the park and the contours of the cactuses that I thought were very intriguing. And so a lot of that imagery found its way into the piece as well. And um, the, so there on the left-hand side of the piece, there's an area that has more of a dark purple and it has these tiny circles and, and different shapes 
um, cut into it. And so that, that section of the piece, I would, when I created that, I was really thinking about the night sky. And it was the first time that I had seen the Milky Way and, and been in the desert at night. And it was just amazing, the vastness of the sky and how far you could see. And, you know, as every hour passed, more and more stars became apparent and they were glistening and it was just really magical. Um, and so I really was thinking about all these things as I created that piece. And so the title Infinite Tapestry is a reference to the vastness of the night sky. And that was something that I wanted to share with other people as I made the piece, just that sense of awe. It, mm -hmm. It's, um, you know, you feel small, but at the same time, it's not in a depressing way. It's more like, this is amazing. This is what it means to be alive, that kind of way. I love that. And uh, let's see. And then also another featured artwork is called Tiger Lily. This one has some vibrant orange hues. Um, can you talk about Tiger Lily? Oh, sure. So I created this piece. It, it was actually a little earlier than some of the other ones. Uh, so before I had gone to the desert, um, but I've always been really interested in uh, just reading about different types of landscapes and different types of um, things that we find in nature. Um, I used to work at National Geographic, actually. So I had a lot of access to really interesting things that I was reading all the time or seeing what explorers were working on. And so I remember when I was working on this piece just beforehand, I had been reading a lot about different, um, like different underwater caves and different types of vegetation they found underwater and, and animal life. Um, and so that was really where I got a lot of those kind of green hues from. They were a little eerie, but really haunting and beautiful in a way. And I thought, oh, I like really love that color. And I want to create a piece about that. And also when I was making the piece, uh, I was thinking a lot about how I wanted to create something that could be a type of, it could be like its own mini world, but mm -hmm. also be read as a kind of organism or some type of vegetation on its own. So almost like a uh, it can be its own living creature, but also like a kind of paper version of a snow globe, if that helps uh, provide an example. So that's, I was thinking about kind of like, so, like that small scale versus large scale and being able to capture that in this piece. And so uh, when you see it, it's very sculptural. It has a lot of dimension. I really wanted to play with those different the, the layering and the spacing between the various layers as I created it. Um, and so when I, uh, so in order to do that, I actually um, used different types. What I do is I use different types of paper and I fold them at different angles to create those layers. And so that resulted in Tiger Lily. And the title is really a reference to when I was playing with the colors, I love that combination of that orange and green. And the orange was just really intense and really beautiful and vibrant. And so I wanted to give it a title that red of nature uh, in a way. And Tiger Lily's a really, you know, fierce and amazing, you know, floral element that we see. Um, so that's partially where the title came from. Like I wanted to give it a really strong name, a name that had a lot of life because I was trying to express this idea of a miniature world, but also like a hybrid of some kind of uh, abstract organism as well. I love that. And finally, there are five smaller works on view. There's one called Infinite Dreams. Do you wanna talk about a little bit about the smaller works? that are currently behind me. <laughs> yeah, sure, I'd love to. So to give you some context, I made a lot of the, all of those works I made during the pandemic, so in 2020. And so you'll see it's uh, its own series. And I was working small because um, during the pandemic, I think it, you know, it's been a really tough year for everyone on many different levels. And for me, it really made me 
think more about impermanence and mortality and time and this idea that things are fleeting. And so when I created these pieces, it was really pushing myself to make things that were, um, you know, a little more on the fly mm -hmm. um, because a lot of my work is so involved and it takes a really long time to create. Um, and so uh, Infinite Dreams in particular, um, I was thinking a lot about this idea of time. So um, I mentioned, you know, with the pandemic and everything, uh, it had me thinking a lot about kind of what do I spend my time doing and what, like, how did I spend my time before the pandemic? How do I spend my time now? How do I want to be spending it? Um, and thinking about how things are fleeting and things are temporary. And so we really need to enjoy what we have and appreciate what we have in this moment. And also thinking a lot about um, this idea that kind of things come and go, but what lives on um, are our dreams and our legacy and thinking about like how we spend our days now and how we want to be remembered in the future. Um, so that piece is just very much thinking about all those different themes and uh, hoping that, you know, when viewers walk away, they just really appreciate what they have in this moment and really cherish their time as they move forward and and do the things that you want to do and, um, you know, making sure that you live the life you want to live. I love that. Well, thank you so much. Alexandra's work is on view at CRC Gallery until March 26, 2021. You can view all her works online as well. Um, make sure to stop and say hello. Thank you. Thank you for having me.